A very good morning to one and all. Response is very poor. Very good, very good. Ne konja satma solla ma? Ne konja? Very good. See, that is sensory neuron, motor neuron. All correct. Or kya then check point or then I put the problem only. Right. In a topic, good that is neurodegenerative diseases. This is the treatment. I am telling you. You can talk about it. You can talk about it. You can Neurodegenerative diseases is not the treatment. Right? Anyhow, it is the latest topic what uh, Johnson sir has kept uh, during this program. Right? So, whatever best I can do, I will do it. Okay? Right? Anyhow, thank you so much for the nice introduction, sir. Um, sir, sir. Uh, it is. Uh, one thing they forgot to include there, right? Sri Ram sir is a human being, <laughs> right? Because being human is very essential for a human being. Nowadays, it's not there. Being human, a human, yes. So what is written there? Welcome. Again, think of what is written there. A ah, few of them say hearty welcome, right? So it is written here as hearty welcome. So you have to sense it 
and it has to be taken to your brain the cortex region then it has to come back as a speech isn't it okay fine but right. all of us should have this balance we should strike the balance between your heart and mind heart always says whatever good to you and mind will think whatever you wanted to do you agree or not isn't it suppose i i wanted a smoke cigarette it's my money i have taken the salary it's my money i wanted to smoke cigarette i go to my uh, uh, house upstairs i smoke cigarette and come mind says that it is my money i am purchasing i am not harming anyone i am uh, smoking in my place that is what the mind says but the heart says it is not good for your health isn't it and we people we are all pharmacists so we have got to play a fantastic role in healthcare and we should always strike a balance between heart and the mind right we should work through mind with heart right okay during covid conditions we have seen lot of things happening in the world throughout the world lot of deaths have happened and we are very proud to say we are the pharmacists because pharmacists are the only professional who has worked 24 bar 7 throughout the world and here are the uh, evidences for that right what am i going to talk to you today am i going to talk to you anything new everything is there available in the world wide web nowadays you see the internet is called as global village it is all in front of you you just click whatever you want it is going to give you enough number of informations right then what is that i am going to educate you education is not just saying the facts education is to make you think that is what is the real education is right so i want you people to think so did you think about it yeah anyone can comment on this yes five five two sir so you say that i'm wrong you are saying that i'm wrong okay right remaining four things i have written correctly but you didn't appreciate that you didn't appreciate isn't it remaining four i have written correctly no right first you should have appreciated that and then sir this one i think it is wrong that is the right attitude please understand this is what is the problem with us now right we always point out the mistakes first we leave all the good things around us we see only what is not good around us this is a human tendency that's why i told you being human is more important than a human being right okay thank you thank you very much and suppose if your brain talks if your brain wants to speak what and all it can speak this slide shows that your brain can say even if i am just 2% of your body weight i consume around 25% of glucose i consume around 20% of oxygen in your body the blood supply i consume around 20% of the uh, body's oxygen and it i can also say that it is around 100 billion neurons are there and it is around 1 million miles length if you keep all the blood vessels is supplying your brain i am the fatty organ in the body brain can say i am the fatty organ in the body i weigh around 1 and 1/2 kilos or 3.3 pounds right i triple in size during the first year of life so many good things it can talk about you when i ask you about you how many good things you can talk about you please think of even though there are 100 billion neurons are there and if you keep all these neurons straight it runs to around 965 kilometers long and the transmission rate of a neuron is about 2500 per second that means 
just per second it can travel around 200 meters around 200 meters it can travel within a second our neuron can take the impulses that much we are capable of when you are there inside the class you will be listening to the teacher but you can think of something else isn't it it's possible right our mind can travel any distance within seconds right i may think that you are listening to me right it all depends on how you react with the help of your mind there is a study called as global burden of diseases study it is published in lancet right the bible for the doctors whatever is published in this particular journal lancet the doctors take it as bible the lancet it is given the study is given on global burden of disease it's one of the uh, largest number of people who are involved in the study global burden of diseases right it is conducted and it was conducted by this institute of health and metrics washington usa it is done to know which disease is more prevailing right and it was found that cardiovascular diseases are more followed by cancer and neonatal disorders other non communicable diseases etc but if you see neurological disorders and mental disorders together it is coming out to around 200 million 200 million people now let us refresh what we have studied already a neuron the structure of a neuron neuron has got a cell body right it has got dendrites it has got axons it has got myelin sheath the nerve impulses starts are generated from axon hillock the cell body is the one which keeps the uh, cell functional going on and axon is the one which transfers the signal and myelin sheath is the one which increases the speed of the signal which is fatty layer around the axon and axon terminals they form junction with the other cells so this is what we know about axons right now neurodegenerative disorders as i have told you already this particular disorder we are not having much treatments but to what extent we can prevent it to what extent we can uh, safeguard ourselves from this disease this is what we are going to study today so neurodegenerative disorders it's a debilitating condition where the progression degeneration or the death of nerve cells can occur progressive growth of the nerve cells can be stopped slowed down an age dependent and irreversible loss of neurons and it is a major threat to the human health if you see here because of this neurodegenerative disorders the movement and mental functioning is affected if you see here i have given few diseases for example hd hd is huntington disease it is called as huntington disease hunting h u n t a n g hunting ton t o n huntington disease another is parkinson's disease pd is parkinson's disease then ad is alzheimer's disease and als is a myelolateral sclerosis a myelotropic lateral sclerosis it is called as als als and multiple sclerosis ms is multiple sclerosis these are all some of the names of neurodegenerative disorders if you see these neurodegenerative disorders they are happening in a particular part in the brain because of the loss of neurons in that particular part you get these diseases say for example you check this alzheimer's disease in the alzheimer's disease in the bracket i have given lc ec and hp they are all the locations they are all the parts in the brain for example lc stands for locus corylus this is the place where the norepinephrine this is there in the uh, brain stem where the norepinephrine is synthesized norepinephrine is formed in that particular place in the brain stem and if you see the next one ec that is entorhinal cortex this is the place where the memory and timing right memory and timing is saved in that particular place that is the particular cells are responsible or the neurons are responsible for memory similarly the hippocampus that is also the place where the memory is very much memory and learning for your learning and memory this is the place hippocampus that is the brain so like this each and every part of the brain which part of the brain it is affected in the neurodegenerative disorder accordingly the symptoms accordingly the manifestations occur
Now, here is a general mechanism of neuroregulation, right? So neurodegeneration, whenever the nerves are getting degenerated, what do you understand by nerve degeneration uh, morphology? It cannot perform its function. These are the two things which can happen. So in the neurodegeneration, there are a few mechanisms. First one is environmental factors. When age advances, the blood supply decreases. When age advances, the neuronal capacity to transfer the impulses decreases because of age or because of the diet lifestyle, sedentary lifestyle. So these are some of the factors which can cause neuronal damage. The second one is metabolic stress, ROS, ROS, reactive oxygen species. Similarly, RNS is also there, reactive nitrogen species. So reactive oxygen species means formation of free radicals, formation of free radicals. What do you mean by free radicals? Whenever in a molecule, the outermost shell has got unpaired electrons. They are all called as free radicals because they are highly reactive in nature. They wanted to fight with someone, the unreact, the molecule where the electrons are unpaired. They are all highly reactive in nature, free radicals. If the free radical accumulation in the body is more, if we don't scavenge it, if we don't remove it from the body, it can lead to aging process very fast. So free radical scavenging is required. So metabolic stress, this is because of mitochondrial dysfunction, the neuronal cell the cell body has got the nucleus, inside the nucleus mitochondria is there, the powerhouse of the cell and this mitochondria if it cannot do its function properly then it can lead to metabolic stress. Then genetic contributors, there are certain genes which are responsible or which are expressed during this uh, neurodegenerative disorders. So we will be talking more about this and the neurovascular coupling that means you know the blood brain barrier, it has got a lot of cells, brain cells like astrocyte, Schwann cells, right? Microglia, oligodendroglia, there are a lot of cells are there in the brain. And these cells, if they don't function properly, if they can get destroyed, then it can lead to some neurological dysfunction. Similarly, neuroinflammation. I think afternoon you have got a separate session for neuroinflammation, right? So neuroinflammation is again immune cell infiltration. Reactivity of astroglia. Astroglia, again, it's again astrocytes are the star shaped cells which are there in the brain. So, these are some of the mechanisms by which the neurodegeneration can happen. And the maximum, the important mechanism is the major mechanism is free radical scavenging, oxidative stress, that is called as oxidative stress. This particular chart will give you clarity. For example, the oxidative stress for the healthy neuron comes either by aging in general or by environmental factors like pollution, toxic chemical exposure, psychological factors and the deregulation of oxidoreductase activities. Oxidoreductase is a very important enzyme. It includes around six different enzymes. So I have given here hydroxylase, oxygenase, right, peroxidase, right, dehydrogenase. There are six different enzymes which has got different role in the body, especially in the neuron, especially in the brain. And this oxidoreductase enzyme activities, right, if it is not proper, then it can lead to oxidative stress. Again, the next one is nutritional deficiency. If the proper nutrient required is not there. See, you know, for epilepsy patients, they used to prescribe more fatty diet. Normally, fatty diet is not prescribed. For epilepsy patients, they give more fatty diet because the myelin sheath is made up of fatty layer. So fat is required for the reconstruction of that myelin layer. But normally these neurons, when it is destroyed, it cannot come back again. Like liver cells, it cannot come back. Hepatocytes can come back even if you cut the liver into half and uh, again it can grow. But neuron cells are not like that. So that is why it is gaining more importance. So because of this oxidative stress, that is formation of free radicals, it can lead to DNA damage, lipid peroxidation, protein oxidation and microglial activation. Microglia is a very important cell in the body. Whenever there is any defense mechanism is required, especially in the brain, this microglia are the one which comes and helps in the defense mechanism. Like how we say lymphocytes in the blood, 
the microglia cells helps in defense mechanism this microglia can cause inflammation right for example when virus attack is there bacteria attack is there this microglia cells they go they fight with them and they try to remove the cells or remove the uh, microorganisms from the body so that is how they can cause inflammation and this inflammation can damage the neurons so if you see here deregulation of neurotropic factors and neurotransmitters that damage the cell membrane and the loss of mitochondrial function ultimately it can lead to neurodegeneration this is again one pathway it may look very complicated but it is very simple i'll tell you how the food whatever we take suppose increased cholesterol food increased cholesterol food increased homocysteine in the body the homocysteine it's an amino acid whenever this homocysteine is more in the body that means vitamins are less because vitamins are required for cleavage or breakdown of this homocysteine whenever your body contains more of homocysteine that means vitamin is less in the body that is how they check understand so vitamin b6 b12 it is all required to cleavage this homocysteine amino acid right so increased homocysteine can lead to neuronal damage then diabetes so because of this there will be vascular damage or stroke and because of this there will be a protein a protein in the brain called as amyloid protein amyloid beta it is called as amyloid beta and this amyloid beta will undergo dysregulation and it can cause amyloid plague amyloid plagues so this amyloid plagues can destroy the structure of the neurons so very importantly the amyloid a protein which is there in the brain is converted by certain substances i'll show you in the next slides this amyloid beta that particular protein when it is getting destroyed by some of the enzymes like secretase alpha beta gamma secretase there is an enzyme when they this particular amyloid is broken down they give some toxins especially the gamma amyloid right gamma secretase so this amyloid can cause plagues right it can cause uh, sclerosis sclerosis means what it is the thickening of the tissues right the tissues are getting thickened hardened multiple sclerosis there is a disease called as multiple sclerosis right so this damage to the neurovascular unit can happen and the cell death can happen there are a lot of risk factors and environmental risk factors i have told you usage of metals acidosis right apolipoprotein e this is again the cholesterol the apolipoprotein e is very very important that is one of the major factors for the neuronal degeneration so beta amyloid plagues is formed an abnormal tau protein tau protein is again another protein which is formed which can cause fibrils uh, and ultimately it can destroy the neurons so when i say neurodegenerative disorders mainly there are three neurodegenerative disorders there are around six are there but main things are alzheimer's disease parkinson's disease and als these are the three things als means a myotrophic lateral sclerosis right okay now who are all the people who are having this disease mohammad ali you know a boxer who was suffering with parkinson's disease then alfred Hit hitler is a german uh, dictator right so he is the one who was having the parkinson's disease then another uh, comedian in the american movies is a very famous comedian in american movies robin williams he was suffering with Lewy body dementia that is nothing but what is the dementia alzheimer's disease alzheimer's disease is also we can call it as dementia because the first stage is dementia right so that particular person is having dementia and because of that he committed suicide he is a comedian is a very famous comedian and because of this disease he committed suicide and if you see the last one als a myelo what is that a myolateral sclerosis myotropic lateral sclerosis als means a myotropic lateral sclerosis this is again a motor neuron disease this 
Stephen Hawking. He is a very famous theoretical physicist. Physicist means he is the one who has uh, discovered the black hole. Sometime back you would have uh, seen in 2018 only he died. So he was the one who was very much uh, interested in that theory. Right. Even the IQ, the intelligent coefficient of him is more than Einstein. Normally intelligent coefficient will be people who are very brainy people. They will have intelligent coefficient between 85 to 115. This person was having 160, 160. And he proved the Einstein theory wrong. Right. And this person was suffering with this disease from the age of 21 and he died in the age of 76. Think of from 21 years to 76 years, he was there in wheelchair, right? He could not speak properly. He could not move his hands. He cannot do any work, but he was there in Cambridge University. He was doing all the research on this black holes. Just go and check in the internet. Stephen Hawkins, right? He was discovering about the cosmos. Cosmos means how the uh, universe has developed, universe how it came first. That is where he discovered the concept of black hole, right? The stars and all, whatever the stars we have, at the end stage, the stars where it will go and destroy. That is what he says in the black hole is the place where they get destroyed. Lot of theories he has postulated and he has been awarded with lot of uh, awards also. So such a person from 20 years to 76 years, he was suffering with this disease in the wheelchair and he has made lot of success stories. Now let me slowly go into the diseases. See Alzheimer's disease, all these diseases are not very common diseases, right? That's what I told you that disorder, the neurodegenerative disorder itself is not common, right? There is not uh, much cure for that. So this Alzheimer's disease, what happens is the amyloid plagues and neurofibrillary and taut angles, they are the one which are formed. This amyloid plagues, once it is formed, it will go and it will be, it is like a sticky substance. It will go and stick to the uh, neurons. It will not allow the neurons to uh, conduct the impulses. So action potential is not formed. So all these functions are declined. According to World Health Organization, they have given some uh, facts about this uh, Alzheimer's disease in September. Last two months before they have given this fact, they wanted to conduct a, a global, uh, this one, what is that global action plan for this in 2025 they wanted to release that so dementia is a deterioration of cognitive function and 10 million cases every year they are getting dementia especially in developed countries the americans russians everyone say that diseases are more in india but which disease is more in their country dementia alzheimer's it's all more there in their country what is the reason the reason is they're all nuclear families right nobody talks to each other they are all depressed. There was a study which was conducted, right? Unmarried people and married people. Who is having more, uh, uh, what do you call, the, uh, problems or who is having more depression? In abroad country, it was the study revealed that unmarried people have got more depression than married people. I think it should be opposite here in India, right? <laughs> Because they are all alone, right? After the age, a particular age, they have to be alone. The government itself says that after a particular age, the uh, children should be allowed to sleep, allowed to sleep in a separate uh, bedroom, right? They have to be allowed separately. They can go. They need not be there in the home. They can go and stay anywhere. So, a lot of things are there which leads to number of millions of people who undergo depression, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. So this is the latest report that 10 million new cases every year and Alzheimer's contribute around 60 to 70 percent of cases of dementia and it is the seventh leading cause of death in the world and the physical, psychological, social and economic impacts are there for the people also for the family who have the disease. There are different stages of Alzheimer's disease. There are seven different stages. In the first stage, the patient himself does not know that he is having Alzheimer's disease. The second stage, slowly he starts. Uh, his memory is declining and the third stage, it is around seven years, this particular stage, he could not concentrate and keep in memory certain things. And the fourth stage, the patient's memory everyday task, he needs assistance from others. And in the fifth stage, this is again uh, around one and a half years, this stage will be there. 
is memory and ability to communicate. The communication itself is coming down. And stage six is the personality changes. The patient need help even for personal hygiene. He need help from others. And stage seven is infantile stage. He is like an infant. He cannot do any of its activities without the help of others. Right. Here, as I've told you, amyloid protein, this is a protein present in the brain. And this amyloid protein has got a precursor, amyloid precursor protein. APP is amyloid precursor protein. From the amyloid precursor protein only, amyloid protein comes. And for the conversion of this amyloid precursor protein to amyloid protein, you require some enzymes called as secretase, alpha secretase, beta secretase, and gamma secretase. Out of this, the gamma secretase when it converts this amyloid precursor protein to amyloid protein, it gives lot of toxins, neurotoxins. And these neurotoxins can create some of the fibrils or senile plagues. That PS is nothing but the uh, gene which is expressed, gene which is coming out, the senile genes, it is called a senile genes. And amyloid beta fibrils, they activate the microglia. As I've told you already, microglia can cause inflammatory reactions in the neuron. So because of activation of microglia, it can lead to neuronal damage, right? Neuronal tangles are formed and another protein called as tau protein is also involved in this, right? So in this pathophysiology, suppose if the bacteria, virus or fungus, whatever it attacks the brain, it can lead to release of some enzymes and hormones. For example, there are some enzymes that, for example, proteolytic enzymes, the capsids of the proteins are destroyed the DNA RNA structures, the transcription and translation are changed. You know, what is transcription? Whenever the DNA is changing to RNA, there is a process we call it as transcription. And translation is RNA to the proteins, right? So if it is a reverse transcription, then DNA to RNA. So all these basics you have studied and this uh, DNA RNA transcription translation is affected in the brain and it can lead to chronic neuroinflammation. So the production of the uh, antiviral amyloid beta protein will be there which can lead to amyloid beta fibrils and tau tangles. Ultimately, these are the two things which can degenerate the brain. So here again, the signs and symptoms are given which we already discussed. What are the risk factors for the disease? What are the risk factors? The major risk factor is age. When age advances, right, the neurons, the capacity to generate the impulses reduces in the neurons. Whereas the family history of the disease is yes, genetic disorder it is. It can come when the same gene is there, passed on to the 50% chances are there for the young one to get passed on from the parents. And inherited genes from the parents, mild cognitive impairment, Down syndrome. Down syndrome is the uh, disease where there are chromosome, 21 chromosomes are there, right? Down syndrome. An unhealthy lifestyle like uh, smoking, then taking alcohol, then previous uh, uh, head trauma, if there is any accident or head injury, there are more chances of getting this Alzheimer's disease. Then being shut off from the community, this is what I told you in abroad countries, this is the major reason they say that they are alone. From the community they are isolated, even they don't know who is there in the next nearby house. So that is one of the major reasons why this Alzheimer's disease comes. The major biomarkers of this Alzheimer's disease, the major biomarkers, you can call it as uh, ATN, that is amyloid beta and tau protein and neurodegeneration, ATM. So this, uh, they are checked, these biomarkers are checked. If these biomarkers are present in the blood, then the people will have more chances of getting Alzheimer's disease. Say for example, in CSF, in plasma, in uh, uh, imaging like MRI scans, they have checked all these three. And they found that the genetic reason or the risk factor is mainly the apolipoprotein E. As I've told you, this apolipoprotein is a major culprit. And this apolipoprotein E, in their three alleles of the gene, alleles means what? Alleles means the nucleotide, which is again repeatedly coming in the, at the different intervals in the DNA, right? You know, we have got some uh, uh, bases, right? Amino acid sequencing is there, adenine, guanine, cytosine, thiamine, all these things again and again, it will come in the DNA. So when the particular sequence where this uh, sequence is altered, right? Especially in the fourth one, the four, that is apolipoprotein, APOE4. 
they are the major culprits this apolipoprotein e4 this particular gene they carries the heavy risk of developing this alzheimer's disease out of all the other uh, proteins this apolipoprotein o e4 right now there are two proteins i told you uh, tau protein this in that two types are that t tau and p tau is there out of that the p tau is very specific for this particular disease alzheimer's disease whereas any neuronal disease the t tau will be more right so these are all the proteins which get expressed when that particular disease comes so by checking all these things in the blood we can find out to what extent the people may have this disease so treatment is there the drug part is there i'm not going very detailed into the drug part because the mechanisms are very simple even though the drugs are new the mechanism is they inhibit the acetyl acetyl concentration of the body will become more and because of internal damage right that is the mechanism by which all these three drugs rivastigmine is one major drug which is being used nowadays widely in the hospitals and this rivastigmine is a inhibitor of acetylcholine esterase and similarly another one um n methyl d aspartate receptor antagonist nmda antagonist so the drug name is mimantin mimantin so what happens is glutamate you know glutamate is a excited neurotransmitter and this glutamate whenever it is carried out from the presynaptic to postsynaptic the excess will get absorbed and it causes the entry of calcium ion also into the cell and that entry of calcium ion is blocked by our drug that is mimantin that means the excess glutamic activity is blocked by blocking the calcium entry back into the cells so because of this it can protect the neurons this is a new drug for alzheimer's disease in 2021 uh, june it got uh, approved and this again uh, acts on the beta myeloid it removes this uh, amyloid plague i told you amyloid plague is the one amyloid protein is the one which is getting converted to amyloid plague it is very sticky and getting uh, stuck to the neurons and this amyloid plague has to be removed from the body and this drug does it so how to prevent this alzheimer's disease first thing is you should have more nutrients even in the case of uh, uh, steve hawkins he has given himself that lot of nutrients whatever he has taken if you go and read his story how many nutrients including coenzyme q10 right a uh, lot of nutrients vitamin e uh, vitamin c so many nutrients he was taking daily in his lifetime so omega 3 fatty acids right yes it is there in fish more right suppose vegetarians they can go for soya bean right and high antioxidant antioxidant you can say all the uh, say for example a b c d right all these vitamins you can say antioxidants right antioxidant mainly vitamin c vitamin e but all the other vitamins like vitamin d vitamin a also is got antioxidants right and you have to reduce the animal fat why to reduce animal fat because they produce free radicals more free radicals are unwanted substances for the body which can lead to aging process very fast so you have to avoid animal fat so that reduce the free radicals here are some of the uh, enzymes and uh, some of the uh, compounds which can be added as nutrients it is all available as uh, commercial products and these can reduce the alzheimer's disease the major example is coenzyme q10 coenzyme q10 so it is again the enzyme which can produce antioxidants especially this particular enzyme the name is superoxide dismutase superoxide dismutase sod we call it as sod in the books if you see they put sod1 this particular uh, gene is expressed more because of coenzyme q10 coming to this parkinson's disease we know that there is dopamine deficiency which can lead to parkinson's disease this is what we have studied and this parkinson's disease there is one called as formation of levy bodies these levy bodies are the one which are formed it's like uh, amyloid plaques right formation of tau tangles right? it can lead to a structural modification remodeling of that neuron it causes levy bodies so it is a uh, unwanted uncontrollable movements are there in parkinson's disease 
This is all the etiology, pathophysiology. So if you see his genetic factors or risk factors are more in Parkinson's disease. And if you see the um, pathogenesis, the protein misfolding, if you see the neuron, especially the axon, the proteins in the axon get misfolded, right? And because of this, there is accumulation of alpha synuclein. This alpha synuclein is one compound which can lead to these Lewy bodies and can degenerate the nerve. And reduction in the dopamine levels. Some of the environmental factors like pesticides, herbicides, those who are staying in the rural regions where the more pesticides exposure is there, farming, agriculture, if you drink well water, right, that also can lead to these diseases. These are all some of the biomarkers. I am not going very detailed into that, just the names you should know. These are a few of the biomarkers in the blood through which we can assess whether the patient is having Parkinson's or not. This again, as you know very well, this uh, substantia nigra is the place where this Parkinson's uh, uh, disease is affecting. So in the substantia nigra, the dopaminergic neurons are getting lost, it is damaged and the Lewy bodies, because of alpha synuclein aggregation, the Lewy bodies are formed. So all these are proteins and these proteins are expressed or coming out whenever the disease is there and we check in the blood the availability of these proteins, that's all. And if you see here, there are some uh, genes, Parkin gene, alpha synuclein gene, DJ1 gene, all these genes, if it is present, if these genes are identified, then they have more probability of getting the disease. As we already know, the oxidative stress, the formation of free radical is again one of the important things for uh, the neuronal cell death. Again, all the stages are there, Parkinson's stages, there are five different stages are there. First stage, tremors will be there in the body, then uh, the patient himself uh, feels very difficult to uh, wear the clothes right by himself then stage three the daily activities are hindered and uh, he is losing the balance when he walks and uh, without stage four without wheelchair he could not walk and stage five he is bedridden so there are different stages of this parkinson's disease and the treatment we know that dopamine uh, is the major treatment for parkinson's disease uh, years together this particular dopamine is there for the management because dopaminergic receptors right so these receptors, if you see here, the picture clearly gives you the peripheral dopamine utilization is blocked by the drugs, right? Some of the drugs, carbidopa, all these drugs, they reduce the peripheral utilization. The dopamine utilization in the periphery is reduced and it is allowing them to go into the cross the blood brain barrier and availability of dopamine in the brain is made more. The availability of dopamine in the brain, how it is, we can reduce the uh, breaking down of it by using this uh, uh, comb as well as the MAO inhibitors. Right. So all these things we have studied and just understand that dopamine availability in the brain is increased and the dopamine loss in other parts are reduced by blocking furin enzymes with the help of drugs. So prevention is um, we have to reduce the homocysteine levels as I have told you homocysteine levels if it is more that means vitamin levels are less and it is a neurotoxic agent. And dietary intake of folates, vitamin B12 and vitamin B6 should be uh, increased, right? And moreover, vitamin 6 might reduce the risk of uh, this one neurodegenerative disorders by having the antioxidant property. Antioxidant property means free radical property. There are a lot of foods you can, uh, you are supposed to eat and a lot of foods you are not supposed to eat. If you see here, the food which you should avoid, it includes coffee also, caffeine, caffeine, alcohol and all, right? The food which you have to take more are coenzyme Q10, vitamin C, E, D, omega-3 fatty acid, etc. Here, the recent studies shows that coffee and Parkinson's disease, it is good. Coffee is good for Parkinson's disease. The last slide I have showed you, coffee you have to avoid, caffeine. But the recent studies shows that Caffeine is good for Parkinson's disease. They have postulated a theory, they have found out a particular gene. That particular gene is nothing but GRIN2A, right? See, coffee consumption decreases the risk of developing Parkinson's disease. Caffeine, they go and act on a G protein coupled receptor. They regulate the CNS neurotransmitters. Apart from regulation of neurotransmitters, they have got other uh, work also, other functions also, like myocardial oxygen consumption 
coronary blood flow, all those. See, this dopaminergic neuron degeneration, especially in Parkinson's disease, they result from polymorphism in glutamate inotropic receptor NMDA, that is N-methyl D-aspartate type and type 2 subunit 2A gene. So don't worry about the names and all. A particular gene is there and this particular gene regulates the brain signals that controls the movements and behavior and the caffeine, they go and acts as a neuroprotein by interacting with that particular gene. Caffeine, see, this is a newer study, right? Coming to the next one, that is ALS. A, myotropic sclerosis. So this is what I told you, the Stephen Hawking, he was having this disease. This is a motor neuron disease. The person could not uh, move properly because it affects the motor neurons. If you see here, there are two types of this disease are there, upper motor neuron disease and lower motor neuron disease. And this upper motor neuron disease, especially the progressive pseudobulbular palsy will happen. And in the lower motor neuron disease, it affects the uh, cranial nerves, especially the 9th, 10th, 11th and 12th cranial nerve. It is called as progressive bulbular palsy. So this upper uh, motor neurons, you know, this movement of facial movement, speech, all those things get affected if there is any problem in the upper motor neurons. And the lower motor neurons, if it is affected, the lower limbs and the breathing muscles will get affected. This is again different types of this uh, ALS. We know that upper motor neuron disease and lower motor neuron disease together is called as AML. So this particular person, I told you, in the age of 21, he got the disease until 76, he was having the disease, but he achieved a lot, even though the disease is manifested by a lot of things, involuntary control will be there, right? Uh, you lose your voluntary control and most of, most of the uh, people in ALS, they die of respiratory failure within three to five years of the first symptoms. And it affects the nerve cells responsible for controlling the voluntary movement. And the upper motor neurons and lower motor neurons, they get degenerated and they die and unable to function the muscle degeneration. All the symptoms will be there. The slurring of speech will be there. Weakness of grip, you cannot uh, hold anything grip. Weight loss, specifically in the arms and legs, muscle cramps and twitches, weakness in the leg or ankle. So this pathophysiology is again, there are few genes, as I've told you, the SOD1 that particular gene is there, then alcin and synataxin. This is also a particular gene. And these genes are responsible for these diseases. If you want to check whether the disease is there, check the dopamine level and check for the gene. If the genes are expressed, if genes are there, then there are more chances of getting this disease. And if you see the excitotoxicity happens and the mitochondrial dysfunction, abnormal protein aggregation and oxidative stress and ultimately the neuroinflammation occurs. So mainly the genetic factor, SOD1 gene, that is superoxide dismutase gene, that is one uh, which is mainly responsible for this ALS disease. For this ALS, the recent treatment options, lot of recent treatment options are there. The one major option is two drugs. One is Riluzol, 50 milligram. It's available as tablets. It's also available as uh, capsules. It is available as... Uh, uh, what do you say, the uh, transdermal patches, right? Edaverin 6, 60 milligram IV. So these two drugs, what it does is, this um, Rilisol, they inhibits the glutamate release. It reduces the body uh, level of glutamate and that thus it reduces the uh, toxins, neurotoxins. Similarly, this Edaravan, they act as antioxidants. That is, they eliminate the reactive oxygen species and they help in decreasing or the slowing the progression of neurodegeneration. The recent studies shows that this Riluzol along with vitamin E, along with vitamin E, what is vitamin E? Tocopherol. This tocopherol along with vitamin E, if you take vitamin E in high quantity, 5000 milligram, the studies are there that vitamin E in high quantity along with Riluzol it is very effectively delaying the progression of the disease. Apart from that, there are so many other drugs like thalidomide. So thalidomide is a banned drug, right? Thalidomide is banned. Then why they are using it? 
it has come back to the market for multiple sclerosis for the treatment of multiple sclerosis sclerotic means what sclerosis means the tissue is very tough right tissue is hardened any tissue so thalidomide has come back to the market for the treatment of multiple sclerosis and leprosy the newer indications for thalidomide so tumor necrosis factors then um, see if you see this coenzyme q10 this is one again major uh, uh, breakthrough there is another factor this brain derived neurotropic growth factor this is also available as commercial preparation nowadays right it is all um, uh, taken from uh, the animal source and it is made available commercially and this uh, whenever the person is in the depressed state right because of this particular brain derived neurotropic growth factor when it is injected the person's depression state is changed and he goes into the active mode and the neuronal activity is increased so whenever you want to prevent this als you should have all the vitamins first micronutrients right vitamins are required for the body very micro level but if that micro level is not there then it can lead to disorders so this is the last disease which i want to tell you it is huntington disease what is that huntington disease as i have told you the nucleotides we have got adenine guanine cytosine and all this cag cytosine adenine guanine this increased cag is repeated in the htt gene htt gene is nothing but huntington gene it is called as huntington gene this particular gene if you see this particular nucleotide sequence it is repeatedly coming in a particular fashion and because of this the person has got cognitive decline he was not able to decide anything has some proteins called as zinc finger protein and aso protein that is antisense oligonucleotide proteins so these proteins help in uh, certain mechanisms to bring this gene express this gene and ultimately if this is not affected not stopped then it can go for deregulation of the pathway which can cause loss of striatal neural function so striatal neurons are nothing but the cluster of neurons in the subcortical basal ganglia of the forebrain so huntington's disease huntington disease symptomatic therapies are there symptomatic therapy again can be divided into motor symptoms and behavioral symptoms and disease modifying agents are there some of the stem cell therapies have come stem cell therapy is very important so i have taken one slide for that stem cell therapy you know stem cells are taken either from the umbilical cord either from the umbilical cord or see from the umbilical cord when you take the blood and if you store it and it can be used for any organ uh, regeneration in future that is why they call it as stem cell bank right nowadays a lot of people when they uh, in future if they have any disease to get cured now itself they keep the stem cells stored in bank that is called a stem cell bank so here for example if you see here the bone marrow in bone marrow they have got um, uh, mesoclonal uh, stem cells are there and in uh, dental pulp there are some stem cells all this where from they have collected they collected from the umbilical cord they collect from the bone marrow they even collect from the uh, uh, somatic cells they collect from blastocytes they collect from the fetal brain so all these are transplanted in the body and the body tries to recognize it and produce more such type of cells and it helps for reducing the progression of neurodegenerative diseases again and again i'm telling you there is no cure for neurodegenerative diseases but we can slow down the progression this is one called as batten disease a two year old girl she had this disease batten disease uh, you know the personalized medicine or targeted medicine right they have targeted a particular gene which is responsible for this neuro problem what is the gene responsible for that neuro problem mfs b8 that is the gene which is identified the name of the girl is mila so that's why they have kept the name the drug name which is used for this it is called as milasen milasen is a drug name and mila is the name of the girl who got this disease that's why so it's a targeted delivery it is personalized medicine individualized therapy the future is going to be like this depending on which gene is responsible for the disease accordingly they treat that is why they call it as 3d printing the 3d printing technology in future when you go and ask a medicine they are going to give you any particular medicine for particular person depending on your body makeup depending on your genetic coding 
right? That is going to be the future. Vegetarians are affected more with this neurodegenerative diseases. Why? Because vitamin B12 availability in vegetarian food is less, right? Whereas in meat and all vegetable, uh, vitamin B12 is more, right? Okay. Then doing hair dye, hair dyeing, it has got ammonia, it has got hydrogen peroxide, which can cause neurodegeneration. Lot of reports are there. Hydrogen peroxide and ammonia, these are the two things which can reduce the energy metabolism, which can cause mitochondrial, uh, reduce the mitochondrial function, right? It can affect the excitatory uh, glutamic uh, neurotransmitters, etc. So, what are the preventive measures, right? Who can get this uh, cognitive uh, impairment? The people who are deficient of particular vitamins like vitamin B12, folate, and TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, they are all more prone for getting neurodegenerative or cognitive disorders and the serum elevated homocysteine levels. So whenever you wanted to treat or whenever you wanted to uh, diagnose, you should go for all these vitamin B12 deficiencies there or not, we have to see, homocysteine deficiencies there or not, then we have to go for checking the TSH and folate levels. So how to prevent all these things? By identifying the risk factors, whether apolipoprotein E4 is uh, there or not in the blood. If it is there, then those people have got more chances of getting this disease. So we have to check for all these risk factors. So micronutrients, when I say micronutrients are required for the body, polyphenol rich uh, nutrients, polyphenol rich food substances have to be taken. So because of lack of time, I'm not going into the details of all these things because polyphenol food sources, it is all given there, spinach, almonds, apples, berries, etc. Physical exercise. Most of us uh, wanted to keep our body healthy and this physical exercise helps to reduce the progression of neurodegenerative diseases. How it is? It is by this. So this brain derived neurotropic factor BD, NF and insulin like growth factor IGF and vascular endothelial growth factor. These and all will get increased in the body when you do exercise. Right. So increased level will improve the cognitive function. The oxygenation to the brain will be improved. The serotonin concentration will raise. Serotonin, 5-hydroxytryptamine, it is one of the happy hormones. Melatonin is again one of the important, melatonin plays an important role. That is sleep cycle. The NREM and REM sleep you would have studied. If the sleep is not proper, then you are going to have this neurological disorders. That is another called as Allen disease, ALAN. Alternate light at night, the night time, right? Have the bed sheet and inside you check the phone without any light. Alternate light in the phone, alternate light at night. That causes neurodegeneration. So this neurodegeneration is mainly because of um, the uh, alpha aminobutyric gamma uh, gammaergic system is involved in this neuroprotection, which is mediated through melatonin. And if melatonin is not properly secreted, then it can lead to neurodegeneration. This is one thing which is used in Japan. In Japan nowadays, the recent ones, Japanese, they started taking this one. This is Ficordion, it is a natural compound from the algae, from a brown algae, right? Uh, nowadays, our people are uh, bringing it from Japan and they are also started using this. So it has got a very fantastic neuroprotective mechanisms, right? It has got a very uh, neuroprotective function uh, there is a compound called as sirtulin 3 that plays a major role for this neuroprotective action of this Fucoida. Again, vitamin B12 deficiency, lot of reports are there. So vitamin B12, copalamin, cyanocopalamin, right, or methicopalamin, you need to have in the body the proper concentration. So I'm not going into the details of it. So vitamin B12, vitamin D, right, uh, vitamin E, so all these uh, uh, the vitamins which acts as antioxidants, all these vitamins are required for the body. These are some of the sources, most of the sources if you see, it is all uh, non-vegetarian sources. Here are few natural products which helps to reduce the neurodegenerative progression. So I have kept only four, the recent ones, that is the Daphne Genwa, it is again a plant product uh, which is helpful for the Parkinson's disease. And another plant product is helpful for uh, uh, reducing the um, ROS, that is reactive oxygen species. Then Galantas nibbles, 
those who are really interested you can go through this because i'm leaving the uh, ppts with them you can very well take it from them if you are really interested right and dha you know milo complan right everywhere dha is there dha is there right so this dha helps in neuronal generation it not only generation it helps in the vitalizing the neurons so this dha influences the neurogenesis that is the formation of uh, neurons especially when uh, the growing stage uh, the person grows during the adult stage right or adolescent stage you can say adolescent stage this growth is very well facilitated by the dha what is dha decaxohexanoic acid right okay right okay. there is one called as magnesium l threonate it is available in the market so this magnesium l threonate is very well helpful it is said to be the master mineral and it helps in number of neurological conditions like acute brain injury at right, alzheimer's disease attention deficit disorder so many places this magnesium is used and how it is used in 1500 to 2000 mg and duration of treatment is for 60 days it increases the brain plasticity the plasticity means the elasticity of the neurons is increased so that it can uh, take the uh, neurotransmission very fast so it can increase the brain derived neurotropic factor a protein which stimulates the formation of new brain cells that is how it is helpful cerebroprotein hydrolysate this is again one of the product which inhibits a uh, uh, particular calcium dependent protease called as calpin and this is also helpful in uh, neuroimmunotropic activity it is actually taken from the pig porcine brain proteins so in general in brain the activity should be pakka in brain we should not allow the free radicals to get accumulated that is what is important right so all the stress induced things should be avoided so major disorders all the diseases mainly what is the problem stress is the major problem right so how to avoid stress how to avoid stress lot of reports are there stress induced diabetes stress induced hypertension stress induced uh, uh, peptic ulcer stress induced immunomodulatory uh, problems in covid conditions there are lot of people who are in stress when somebody uh, just sneezes then immediately they feel that they will get the disease and they go home they think about it they get stress and they get the disease right stress induced hormones are the chemicals which are there in the body are more important adrenaline is there right whenever you get stressed cortisol levels will rise in the brain whenever you get uh, uh, to run fast adrenaline secretion is more isn't it so chemicals few chemicals we have to keep always in the higher level for example d o s e dose dopamine oxytocin serotonin endorphin d o s e these are the four things which you should keep the all these things high in the body to be happy how happy the face is right it doesn't have any stress the chocolate cake is the entire world for this particular baby isn't it okay so again louis hay whenever you are free please go through this louis hay is a teacher uh, in abroad uh, very uh, two years before in august only she died she was identified with breast cancer in the age of 54 and doctor said that the stage is on the fourth stage cancer so you will die in another 2 to 3 months you will not survive in this world so be happy and go and she decided to be happy she started giving whatever she has got money whatever it is she felt herself happy and made others also happy and she lived still 92 years right till 92 years she lived she has written 23 books how the body mind works in one of her books she has written 17 pages tabular column where when you get headache she has written what is the reason what might be the reason what you have to do out of her experience she has written and she is not a doctor right but she is a teacher teacher yeah happiness is a choice when i say i you have to be happy how oh, everybody's happiness is different isn't it somebody will be happy when they listen to music somebody will be happy when they watch movie with a good companion 
somebody will be happy when they go for swimming somebody will be happy for a long drive somebody will be happy when they go for the gym somebody will be happy when they play cricket someone will be happy dancing someone will happy keep on counting the money there are people right someone will be happy when they read the books someone happy when they shop especially when the credit card is given to them people will be happy when they go for a photo shoot people will be happy chatting with the friends doing a group activity is happiness for some people traveling with their friends happy purchasing gold again happiness for somebody the real happiness is helping others without expecting anything that is the real happiness so i'd like to conclude by saying the sayings of stephen hawking however difficult life may seem there is always something you can do and succeed at whatever the life gives you lot of sorrows lot of things you can succeed there is something in life which you can pull on right thank you thank you very much Thank you, sir, for enlightening us with the words. Now, my request, the Prime Minister, hand over the moment to Dr. Nish, Sri Ram Sir. Huh? Yeah. 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 Ye